What's going on everyone? Welcome to today's video. It is October 26 and I'm not in a tree stand because it's a southeast wind and it is like 20 mile an hour winds. So today we're using this time to make a couple videos. And I've had this bow, this TRX 38 sitting on the shelf being ready to be built for like two months now. So today's the day we finally got to make it what I want to do with this bow is make it my indoor rig. For right now, it probably will transition into like my outdoor rig. Um, but I need an indoor bow. Indoor season is right around the corner. I'll probably actually like start shooting in December-ish time. So it's always good to be a little bit ahead of schedule because I never am. So today we're going to try to get a little bit ahead of schedule. We have TRX 38. Uh, this is Gen 2, so they had two Gens. Um, this was the this was the first. No, they've had three Gens of. They've had three Gens of TRX 38s. They had the one prior, which was the old Focus Grip. Then they have the second Gen, which is the new grip, and then they have the third Gen, which is dovetail for the rest and third axis dampening. So that's the difference. Just some minor tweaks. Oh, and they got rid of this top dampener right here. So they literally just have this third axis dampening, which is what they rock and roll with now anyways. <clears throat> so we're gonna get this set up. I'm, I'm curious to see if there's gonna be any difference between these two. They should shoot relatively similar. Um, we got some shrewd Rev X bars. We got an Excel. What is it? Oh, Achieve XP. Forgot what the name was. Excel Achieve XP. Got an Ultra View 3. Be Real Grip. I got a hinge because we're going to have to shoot it. I have a uh, Matthews Shrewd Genuine sidebar mount. Probably take this angle down off of the old one. We're going to take this Hamsky rest off of the old one. And I have a specialty arch repeat that I'm going to take off of this one. So we're going to kind of cannibalize this bow, put it on this bow. And we have, um, I've been doing a lot of testing as of lately, and we have some Victory VTAC 23 indoor arrow, so 23 diameter. A great arrow for indoor archery um, It's a 23 diameter because you can use it in any form of 3D archery. Uh, like USA Archery World Archery tournaments, this is the biggest arrow you can get. Um, and for NFAA stuff, you can go bigger, but this is like the, the threshold of US Air 2 type stuff. So I think I'm gonna fletch these up. Um, we're gonna build this out, try to get a bullet hole, see how it shoots a little bit, and um, see where we go from there. trick it's really not a trick anymore it seems like a lot of people do it um, but when installing a, a Hamsky rest I don't have the stock one that came on I don't know where it went it must have cut it off a while ago but you run a run a cord down to the limb and it comes with a uh, like a limb stop thing what I like to do is take my cord I just use Dewitt material I've used uh, I've even used serving material before and it's worked, but dewit material is a little more rigid. But what I like to do is there's this little plate down on the bottom and all it does is hold in these bow press little hooks down here. And you can actually loosen them just enough to where you can squeeze in a cord right behind there. So you got your cord right here. And now uh, what I'll do is I'll just tighten that back down. I'll tie this up and then I can run my cord all the way up my hands ham ski tighten it down um, I'll have to find the little tightener tensioner deal I don't know where that went um, but it's a good nifty little thing and I haven't noticed any like accuracy or efficiency or wear or tear or anything by doing this it literally is just a plate to hold in those little bow hooks so good little trick I gotta find the tensioner thing though if you run this down low there's a lot of vibrations that come from it so if you run it a little higher I feel like there's not as many vibrations. Don't know if that's right or not. 
Okay, so we have the Hamski completely installed. I'm gonna flip the bow around. And then next we're just gonna throw the peep sight in, roughly. And then we're gonna find our correct knocking point. Tie that in, tie the D-loop, adjust the peep sight right by drawing it back. Um, and then, then we're pretty much ready to go to get a rough paper tune. Oh, first we'll have to fletch and make one of those arrows. Then we'll get a rough paper tune. I'm curious. <laughs> Have my just a hamski type of day, hamski gen, gen two pro level been my go-to lately. Um, so I, I I made this like emergency kit that's in my truck since I've been like traveling around so much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a, uh, a bow square tool, which I normally don't do. I normally put a level on the bow and level it all out. But this essentially does the same thing. Um, you can get it pretty, pretty dang close and then we can go uh, paper tune from there. But what a bow square does is it, it, it's a 90 degree when it clips in the string and then you use this to find exactly where it sits on the rest. The only thing I don't like is it, it does, depending on how the valley is on the rest and the diameter of the arrow, there's a little bit of play, but it'll get us close, close enough. All right, I guess you don't even have to worry about the valley or the rest because this is a drop away, which we can go like this. You loosen it up, there we go. Loosen it up and real quickly we can see how deep the arrow sits. We're doing some some class A eyeballing since we don't have don't have the right stuff. But what I think this is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tie it in first straight through the burger hole and then I'll just bump the rest as B afterwards. So that should work just fine. Guessing that's the thickness of the knock. Just about. You want just a little bit of slop, about like one serving. You want like one serving. So instead of tying down on the one that's gonna cinch it down tight, I go like the one over, because when you draw back, it creates a little bit of pinch. If you've watched any of my builds, you know that. Um, assuming there's some new people watching this. So there we go, there's our two little ties. We just do simple overhand knots, over, over and underhand, however, whatever type of knot that is, the simple one that you'd like tie your shoe with first. Over and under, I make my uh, bottom one one serving thickness longer. So I think I do three ties on the bottom, two ties on the top. And uh, I don't know, I just kind of have always done that. I either do one on the bottom only, or I do it that way. So now we take our D-loop material. My lighter is giving out on me. I swear, the lighter is one thing that just always disappears in shops, like lighters, Lighters and Allen wrenches. It's like you can never have enough of them and you can never find them when you need them. Yeah, look at that, it's dying. Let's give that a good snug with your hand before you uh, tie it all the way down. I think I might like a longer D-loop on this. So I'm gonna just run a little bit longer D-loop. Probably start out something like that. And then I'll cut it. Never try to um, light it on fire because I hear it makes the material brittle or, or not as strong. I should actually do some research into that. Um, I just hear that that's how it is and believed it. And it kind of makes sense. Catches on fire, breaks down the particles in the, uh, in the dilute material. So I just try to just heat it up enough to where it melts. Where did those pliers go? Just losing everything today. There we go, we got our D-loop. Hopefully it's in the right spot. I think I did that right, thinking through it with this square. 
Now what we're gonna do, this arrow doesn't have a tip in it, so I can't shoot it, and we shouldn't shoot it yet because our D-loop is not tied in. Do not shoot it without your D-loop tied in at least a little bit. Peep tied in. Peep, what was I saying? D-loop. Yeah, don't shoot without your D-loop. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, don't shoot with your peep sight not tied in because you could lose an eyeball. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna get our peep sight height. I have it roughly where I need it, but we're gonna draw back. See how it feels. At way high. You just take it, bump it down. Don't need a bow press or anything if you're at this stage. <laughs> Don't want to do that. Probably decent. Let's see if this thing works now. Oh, why is it on? Getting some weird twisting going on. Ever so slightly crooked. To the left. Maybe just a touch more, but that's pretty close. It's amazing it's all the way up there and it's affecting it. Dope. Okay, so now we're we're lined up pretty good with our peep. Might have to adjust it a little bit because like as you shoot, you find that you hold steadier and you're different. Fine tune your anchor point just by bumping it up and down a little bit. So all I'm gonna do right now is tie in this one just right around here until I for sure know it's in the right spot. On a hunting bow build or something, I might. Um, I'm less finicky about it just because you're running up and down your sight tape so much. You set it like in the middle of the road and just run it. But on an indoor bow where you're shooting 20 meters only, you really can get it dialed in just how you want it. There we go, there's that. Um, next we're gonna throw our sight on. The axis on the sight, the second and third axis is already set up because I took it off of another bow so we don't have to worry about that. Um, but we're just gonna put everything on because having long stabilizers on um, does affect the paper tune, can potentially affect the paper tune. So I'm gonna throw it on. I don't have the weight set up to how I'm gonna want it. I just have these bars with a little bit of weight on it already. This is the wrong quick disconnect. I haven't held a bow with long stabilizer in a while. Oh, I almost forgot. Um, we have to put on the B-roll grip. If you have a stock grip on and you want to put a B-roll grip on, the easiest way to do it is you pull this top little corner, just kind of slide it down, and then you peel it around until it just pops right off. Super important. Do not do this. Do not do this. Don't take this and I'll throw it right on there without taking all of this sticky stuff off. If you put a B-roll grip on with all of this sticky glue on, you now have permanently mounted a B-roll grip onto your bow, and congratulations, because you are not getting it off. Boom. All right, let's paper tune. Oh, JK, we gotta make an arrow real fast. I am gonna be doing 120 grain tips. Um, test them out, see how they fly, see how they tune. Um, I think I have I have a couple different options, so if they don't work, we can mix, mess around with it. These these should work though. And I have this tiny little bit of glue left. I didn't realize we are pretty much out of glue in this place. So here we are, trying not to burn my fingers. Just playing with fire over here. Tip installed. Shut this off before I burn something. Uh, and we're gonna fletch these up just with the bits and burger real quick. I have these set up same way I had my, uh... oh, this is set up as a four fletch, ain't it? Cause I, that was the last I fletched. 90 degree, yeah. Should we four fletch these? Send it? A little overkill, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, I feel like it is. Yeah, let's change it to three fletch. Cause I fletched up uh, my pro comps for elk 
for Fletch because I was having some broadhead issues. I fixed it, but for indoor stuff, really don't need it. And I got these bigger veins. So let's do, feels like three. Fletch them up and see if it's actually three or not. Pull three out. These are uh, boning X vein, three and a half. I like to run a little bit bigger um, for indoor because it really doesn't matter. Really, I was I was told once for indoor, indoor a tune almost a lot of target stuff like tuning is. Some people go so extreme, and there are some pros that just really don't give a rip and literally don't tune their stuff, and they just throw it on and shoot it. Because uh, we're not dealing with broadheads, we're not dealing with anything like that. It's literally. It doesn't matter if the tip's sticking in or the notch sticking in the target as long as it's doing the same thing over and over again. <laughs> like seriously, George told me that once. <clears throat> so we'll flush these bad boys up, see how they do. All right, let's see how much I suck at putting this together. Wow, I haven't shot one of those in a while. All right, we are a little knock high, so we gotta bump our rest upward. Close, get a little right. We'll bump it up a little bit more. Very close. It is a little right. So let's move the rest to the right. Oh, nice. I think that's good. For indoor stuff, I really don't care too much because 20 yards, it's got a little bit of wobble as long as it hits the same spot. And you really realize that by just shooting and you know like if you're shooting spots really well, you just kind of know. You can watch the arrow flight and everything. Some guys even put like a, a wicked left tear in it just to have some consistency in the arrow doing the same thing over and over again. But we're gonna run that. And um, that is a complete bow build because it is about 30 mile an hour winds outside. And I am not shooting. That back target just needs to be quiet. <laughs> um, I am not shooting outside. So there we have it. This is my uh, my bow that I'm going to be shooting for this indoor season. TRX 38 with all the goodies on it. It feels good. It feels like I am completely out of shooting shape for uh, competition stuff because I'm wobbly. Been shooting hunting bows too long. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, make sure to check out brollmerch.com. Pick up a hat. A lot of new stuff is back in stock and a couple new things. Make sure to check it out. And make sure to subscribe if you like this stuff. And we'll catch you in the next one.